Hey there, productive people. How's it going? My name is Carter Sirach, also known as The Productive Dude here on YouTube. That's what I like to do over here is upload videos. But I also own a marketing agency that specializes in web development and web design. So that's why today I'm going to be showing you how we plan for our websites. I'm going to go into four main topics. The first being site mapping. And then next we're going to do some rough overall branding as well as some wireframing. And fourth, I'm going to be showing you how I do my mockups for web design. This video is about the very early stages of web design, but I'm probably also going to be doing some more videos further down the process of web development. So if you guys wanna see those, you can find the link in the upper right hand corner of this video. This video is sponsored by Miro. They have a digital whiteboard app that I've been using for a long time. I've made plenty of videos using Miro far before I ever got in contact with them. So I was happy when they decided to sponsor some videos with me. So thank you Miro for sponsoring this video. Now let's jump right into it. Miro is basically an endless whiteboard. You've got these drawing tools, you've got sticky notes, you've got text, arrows, and so much more. But the first thing that I wanna talk about today is how to create a site map in Miro. So what I like to do to start out here is hit F to pull up the frame tool, and then it'll show you all of these different sizes that you can pull from. So for a site map, I would like to probably go with like an A4 format so that we have a vertical canvas. I'm going to name this site map. Next, I'm just going to zoom in with the scroll wheel and then you can hit H to switch to the hand tool and sort of drag around. And I'm just going to now switch to the text tool by hitting T and I'm just going to click into this empty space and start typing out our pages. So the first one is going to be home. Then we're going to have an about page, maybe a services page. And by the way, I'm just clicking and then hitting command C to copy and then command V to paste so that I have a similar size text. And then finally, let's just do a contact page. This is like a very simple website. As you can see, you can highlight and drag these around. And now I'm just going to create the sitemap structure. So we're just gonna start at the very top. We're gonna to click and drag the home page. And under that, we're gonna have about, services, and contact. And I'm just going to click to the arrow tool or you can hit L. This is the connection line tool actually, but I'm just gonna to switch to this arrow. And you're going to just drag from home to contact or whatever other page you want to drag to. And then let's just edit these settings on this arrow. I'm going to make it a bit thinner here and I'm going to make it curve or actually I like this one for my site maps. So now let's just move these a bit. And now I'm just going to drag and connect to services. And finally, we're just gonna drag and connect to about to finish that off. Now, this is a basic site map, but if I wanted to go even deeper with it, I could do so just by copy and pasting services. And we're just going to act like we're a home improvement company or we're building a website for a home improvement company. So I'm just gonna write out roofing, siding, and we'll just do finish work. Okay, and these are going to be our services. We're just gonna drag our arrows out for these. And then let's just say we also have a meet the team section underneath about. And this sitemap kind of represents our menu. So this would be like our main menu. So I'm just gonna write main menu. We'll make that a bit smaller. And then let's also imagine that I duplicate this and add in a footer menu. Okay, and now I'm just going to copy this structure, command C, command V, and I'm going to put it down in our footer menu area. So let's say we don't want to necessarily have a drop down list for services. Let's say we just want to list out our services individually. We want to list out our meet the team individually as well. So since they're considered drop downs under services and about in the main menu, I'm just going to make them their own item in the footer menu. So let's just drag this out and give them their own link. And that's pretty much how you would create a sitemap for your different menus. And what I would also recommend is exporting this just by clicking on the frame, hitting more, and then you can go ahead and export image as, and we can export it as a vector so that it's a PDF 
And then we can go ahead and send that to our client if we wanted to send them a proposal or if we've already started work on the website, we can send over this sitemap so that they know what the plan is and how all the pages are going to be interconnected. This is also a useful tool for once you are working on the website to just keep on track and know which pages you have to still complete. Next, I'm going to show you how to create a cohesive place to keep track of all of your branding. And actually, I'm just gonna duplicate this sitemap frame by hitting Command C and then Command V to paste. We're gonna move it over here. And let's just hold Shift and drag. And that's going to allow us to select everything here. And then I'm just gonna hit Backspace to delete all of that. And we're going to go ahead and rename this frame to Design Preferences. And in these early stages, I just like to drag out a few circles for our branding. So I'm just gonna to go to the shape tool here and I'm going to drag out some circles. If you hold shift while you're dragging it, it will retain the proportions on this circle. If you don't hold shift, it'll turn into an oval. So make sure when you click on the shape tool that you hold shift and drag, and then you can bring that circle into your design preferences here. I'm just going to get rid of this border and we're going to add in our design colors by scrolling all the way to the bottom of our colors. You probably won't have this many, but I do because I've added so many colors over the time that I've spent on Miro. But you're just gonna hit this plus button down here and you can actually enter the hex code or you can just find a color that looks nice. Right now we're actually on the border. I meant to go to the inside. So let's just turn off the border again click on the inside, and then let's go down to this bottom one here and click on that. So let's just say that this is our primary color. I'm then going to hit Command C and Command V once I have that color selected, drag out another circle, and then I can add our secondary color. I'm not really getting too into the color design and how we go about that right now. That's for another video, but for now I'm just going to add some uh, secondary colors here and we're going to make this one a little bit smaller just by holding shift and dragging the corner and that's going to signify that it's the secondary color and it's going to be uh, less prominent. You can also start mocking up some buttons and some different components in here if you want to get a good idea of what those are going to look like just by dragging out some other shapes and we can also click the text tool and start typing out uh, what the text is going to look like. I'm going to go with white here because it's going to go on top of our button and I'm just going to type in submit for this button. So that's just a rough idea of how to kind of start creating some of these elements. You can also add your whites and your blacks, your darker colors, your lighter colors that you're going to use in the website. But overall, you're just trying to get a general feel of what the colors that you're going to use are. And by no means is this like the 100% professional way to do it. If you wanted to take the time to go into Figma and create a design guide or a standard for your design, that's probably the better way to do it because Miro is limited on their fonts. And they're also limited on some of the things that you can do in terms of making components for your website. This is just a quick scrappy way to start getting some ideas off the ground for your design preferences. You can also test some things out here by hitting the text button and we can go into something like a Brill fat face for the font, let's say, and we're just going to write something out. And this could be an idea of how we want to display our different call to actions. So maybe I would just do a few examples here Let's get another font that we can use down here. Then I'm just going to go ahead and paste in some lorem ipsum, make this a little bit smaller, fit it to where I need it. We can drag our button down here. So that just gives us an idea of like what a call to action might look like. And this is just a good way to sort of start coming up with our design ideas. It's important when you're designing a website that you keep things consistent. So the more planning you do ahead of time, the better off you're going to be. It will take more time, but if you wanted to, you could do all of this in Figma and you could create your design components, your design colors. You could do all of that over there. The reason I'm showing you in Miro is because this is what I do with websites that are on smaller budgets from like one to $5,000. If we're looking at doing a five to $15,000 plus website, then we'll just do everything in Figma and we'll have a design system from the start. But for scrappy, quick websites, it's not necessary. 
Next, I'm gonna go over wireframing. So when you're doing wireframing or you're creating a flowchart for your website, you're just going to go to this frame tool here and then you can click on phone, tablet, or browser. So I'm just gonna go with browser. And that's going to give us a browser width. I can even show the device to see what that's going to look like. And we can change the title of this to home. So we're gonna to wanna to create a mock-up for each of our uh, items in the sitemap. So if I check this off here uh, as I go and I complete these, uh, we're just going to want to add new mock-ups for each of those. So we can drag that out and we can start creating our sections within the website. So we might add a call to action here. Maybe we add a nice image over here. You could even go ahead and create your menu up here. You can write on this if you want to. So you could just write like logo up there so that you know that's where the logo is going to go. And then you can just write out the pages. So let's just write out the pages here, home. I'm just gonna use that blue color and then we'll make the background transparent. Just duplicate these, make a few more menu items here. And this is sort of going to give you a rough mock-up of the flow of the website. It doesn't need to be the high fidelity version. In fact, if you're just building a WordPress website or something like that, and you're the one doing the entire web design, like I typically do with these projects where it's just me and then one other person, then in that case, I would recommend just, you know, setting it up as good as you can and not spending way too much time on the mock-up. If you have an idea of what you wanna create, that will be enough. However, if this is a big budget project and the design is very crucial, then I recommend, uh, you know, again, doing something like this in Figma. But just moving along here, what we would do next is kind of just maybe have another section, another picture, and then we could even start adding in like our services down here. And then you're going to go ahead and do this for each of the pages. But what I also recommend doing is going to your frame tool and adding a tablet version so that you can create a version of this that will look good on a tablet. So you're going to have to sort of change your design to fit the screen a little bit better. So maybe you would do something like this for the tablet version and you would essentially just make it more responsive. Maybe we could have a hamburger menu for the tablet as well. And then our logo go in the corner right there. And then once you were done with the tablet for the home page, you go ahead and do the mobile version as well. And you would follow that similar process. All right, guys, that's that. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on how to use Miro for web development and web planning. This is for quick, simple, scrappy websites. And if you wanna do something a little bit more advanced, then definitely check out something like Figma. But if you guys wanna check out Miro, definitely use the link in my description and head over and see what it's all about. If you enjoyed this one, please like this video, subscribe and hit the bell to see more videos like this and comment below leaving me some feedback or some kind words. Also, if you wanna see more Miro videos, check out the playlist right here. This thing is chock full of tons of great Miro videos, and I know that you guys are going to love them if you've stuck through this video this long. All right, we'll see you in the next one.